comparison, definition, circumstance, situation, and testimony. All of that just really helps us get our image right. right? That's it. Okay. That's right. So you've heard a lot about the five common topics, right? You guys have heard about this a lot. Five common topics. Okay. No big deal. Um, so the five common topics are ways to brainstorm. So we use it in the brainstorming, the invention stage. Or when we're having a conversation, we use it in class to guide the conversation because there's ways to brainstorm. Wait, do we do that in real life? Yes. yes. Yeah. So Alicia talked about the five canons of rhetoric. Three. Three canons of rhetoric. So technically there's five, but there's only three words covering in this curriculum. But we, this is a conversation I have with my students the first day of class is we've got these, canons of, these five canons of rhetoric. We've got these five common topics. What's the relationship between each other? And usually one person picks it up and they're like, aren't all the common topics in the invention or brainstorming part of the canons of rhetoric. And that's it. They're just for creating dialogue, creating ideas, creating conversation. And we're gonna dive in and explore each of these now with each of our essays. Which will help our kids, obviously, in so many other areas as well. The conversation, I think, would be the biggest one. Yeah. Good conversation. Yeah. And like, the big what they're telling you is super important, because then like, uh, CC just builds and builds and builds and so like she's talking about three at challenge one we're doing all five you learn the memorization and how to deliver it and stuff so like you know like what she's telling you is super important because you're laying a foundation so that they can continue to build on it so what she's saying is like it's mm -hmm. spot on and cool yeah like whenever someone's like oh you don't understand what you're doing just trust the system what that really means is you don't understand what you're doing right now because you're only doing a part mm -hmm. but by the time you get to the end you're going to be doing the full and it will all come together and make sense mm -hmm. So, okay, essay three, unless we have any more questions? Okay, yes. just to clarify, by yeah. the time we get to essay three, we're on our third book. That's right, we're just, you're flying through here now, yes. Yes. What comes before essay two? <laughs> Thank you, you're so helpful. <laughs> okay, essay three. Um, in B and one, we combine essay three and four together, okay? But in A, you guys will do those separately. So, uh, for essay three, we are going to start with our um, invention week and we're going to start with comparison so we're going to jump in here and and we're going to spend two essays studying comparison first we're going to study how are things similar then in essay four we're going to study how are things different okay so alicia's kind of drawn out from here on out your book provides a little like workbook uh, a worksheet the student book has it in your book has a little worksheet and it's helpful if your student recreates it just on like a piece of notebook paper or something and so we're going to go through here and we'll do this real quick um, let's pick something. It can literally be anything, okay? Something in here you want to compare to something else. Dwarfs. Dwarfs, yes. all right. Appreciate you. Yes. Oh, yep. So, all right, dwarfs. So, what are we going to compare dwarfs to? The White Witch. Okay, to the White Witch. <coughs> no, that's no, not that at all. You can compare anything. anything. Yeah, now, I will say, some comparisons may be more helpful than other comparisons. But, CC, <laughs> when CC was doing examples of comparison, they compared something to an orange, okay? That's what I was about to say, let's Anything be honest, else. they'll pick something totally random. They will. Like, laid across to the sun. I mean. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to start and say, how are they the same? What do both dwarfs and the white witch both have? Extreme size. Okay. Oh, um, one so, way or the other. I mean, yes, yeah, extreme sizes. Size. Yeah. So they're both something to stare at, you know? They're beyond human form. Okay, what else do they both have? Both Okay, they're both emotional and maybe on the mean side. They've been hurt in life. At least in this book, that's not it. Yes. Ooh. What if they both are? <laughs> they both are beings. They both are evil. Say what? Evil. Evil. Okay. Yeah. For the purposes of this book, they are. Uh huh. Um. They both are. They're both, they both live in Narnia. Is that what? They both have okay, so let's say they both do. They both do live in Narnia. What else do they both do? I just trying to know. They both do uh, anything else. Um, they both do evil. I need to say that too. They both persuade them. Yes. Yeah. Like both do manipulate. Yeah. You could do both our persuasive. Mm hmm Yep. Okay, excellent. So now here's the golden part of doing this chart. This is what students miss out on, okay? So this is what I want you to really understand here. We are not just doing this chart for the fun of it, although it was a lot of fun, right? <laughs> That's how we want to spend our time. We are doing this chart because we're now gonna take this and put it onto our Annie chart. So I want you to look at this chart. What on here 
is affirmative, negative, or interesting? What can we move over to our chart? Negative, they're both concerned. Okay, perfect. I'll turn it down one more. What else? Who else is like? What would affirmative be? They both live in Narnia. That would be a, is that a good thing or? Is or it, maybe neutral. It could be just interesting. It could be a good thing. Okay. What do you think? To categorize them on the any chart, does it have to be still based on the thesis? Yes. Okay. Oh, it's okay. not just like yeah, it's a good thing or it's a bad thing. Right. It's according to whether Edmund should have followed the language. Right. Yeah, so they're both evil, so Doris and the White Witch are both evil, so you shouldn't have followed them. And manipulative. And you can write those down as two different reasons. Yep. Okay, does everyone kind of get a vision of where we're going with this? No, but I'll get there. <laughs> so once you're done with this, you know, you've built another five to ten reasons onto your anti chart. Okay? So we're we're building on here. Hey teachers, thanks for popping in and watching this video. Um, if we haven't met before, hi, I'm Erica Lynn and I'm a homeschooling mom. I have four kids and I have been teaching them for over 10 years now. We use a classical approach to schooling, so I've been using my father's world and classical conversations. Um, it's my goal to help homeschooling become easy for you too. So I'm taking all the tips and tricks that I have learned over the years and I'm putting them here for you to see. So congratulations on making it to the end of the video. Would you just pop a hearts emoji into the comments so that I know you watched the whole thing? Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell. And if you liked this video about the LTW curriculum, you need to check here to see the next video in this series. You guys have a great day and remember you are already enough.